Hello, this is Matt Gaskill presenting Philosophy 160, Supplemental Problem 5.5, The Unique Identity Problem. This problem uh, states, let nx mean x is a natural number and zx mean x is an identity element for addition. And then we're supposed to create a statement that says there is a natural number that is uniquely the identity element for addition. And then let's us know that this is the obvious application of the logic emphasized in the problems of section 5.5. So here it's gonna be a little bit unique of a presentation. I'm gonna show you a couple of wrong answers. And, um, and then the third example, I'll show you the correct answer. Um, and then we'll conclude so, with uh, a slide that has both the wrong answers and the correct answer uh, all together so you can see the differences. So the um, uh, my first attempt at um, creating a symbolic statement to answer the second bullet, I came up with existential x and then within parentheses nx if and only if zx. And then if we translate that uh, back into natural English, what we can compare that to the statement we're supposed to create in the second bullet. And so translating that symbolic statement into natural English, we can say there is a number such that it is a natural number, if and only if it is the identity element for addition. Now, this isn't quite right. Um, we're we're not quite capturing what uh, the statement's looking for. And it may not be obvious as to why it's not quite right, but let's go move on to the second wrong and then we'll get to the correct one. And then what we'll do is we'll compare those so that we can see kind of what the difference is and, and why this isn't the right answer. So the other um, option that I had in my head was instead of the if and only if, Ch changing that, so the same statement, but changing that to be a conjunction, which would then just change the um, the natural English to become there is a number such that it is a natural number and it is the identity element for addition. And that's getting, I think, pretty close. Um, the problem we have here is that we have this requirement of uniquely. So it, it needs to be not a, a whole set of numbers that meet these requirements, what, but a, a unique number. And so that's where this, this key word here, unique, it tells us that we're probably going to have to use the equal sign. And so then the statement, uh, which kind of captures that, is um, the one shown, and then that translates so we've got existential x and then within brackets nx and a universal y and then within parentheses zy only if uh, y equals x and then close everything. And then translating that back into natural English, we can say there is a number x such that it's a natural number and for every y, if y is the identity element for addition, then y is x. And so this is the statement, the correct statement, a uh, symbolic statement that captures um, kind of the entire set of requirements for the second bullet. And then uh, a good reference for this one is uh, in section 5.4, they talk about exactly 1p. And so if you kind of look at that, section 5.4 and then come back and look at this final slide then you can see kind of some of the differences here and so we've we've shown the first and second uh, incorrect answers alongside with the correct answer and um, and we've color coded um, you know the words and the symbols so we can see kind of where uh, each of those translations is coming from uh, but um, kind of the moral of the story is it's that word unique that really kind of puts us into the situation where we've got to have 
this uh, y equals x. It, it could be x equals y. Uh, that would be fine. Z y only if x equals y. Um, you know that would be acceptable as well. So um, at any rate, um, this is the right answer for supplemental problem 5.5. This is the translation kind of back into English, um, which which I think captures the requirements of that second bullet. If you've got any questions, hit me up on Prino. All right, thanks.